and voila, the surface distribution of salinity. Derived from observations, yeah, from vessels and from Argo uh, distributions. Okay, you can see the salinities and you see numbers between 35, some reached 32 to 36. Grams per kilogram, you couldn't taste the difference. Very, very similar, but you can still distinguish them if you have uh, precise salinity instruments. Again, you can see some features. You can identify regions where the salinity is increased. Let's have a look in the um, Atlantic Ocean. This is the Atlantic Ocean. You can see these areas. They look like circular patterns here where the salinity is higher. Okay? North of the equator and south of the equator. Right? And this is the consequence of having more evaporation than rainfall in the area. So this is what creates a higher salinity near the surface. Okay? And in polar regions, what creates relatively low surface salinities is the addition of fresh water through melting of the, through the melting of sea ice and indeed having the continental runoff so you can see the influences of of uh, an excess of fresh water okay so now the key difference in this uh, between the oceans and sea surface salinity is the difference between the north Atlantic and the North Pacific. You can see that the North Atlantic is significantly has significantly higher salinities compared to the North Pacific. Okay, it's much more fresh water in the North Pacific compared to the North Atlantic. And that's one of the main reasons why the deep circulation in the ocean starts in the North Atlantic and there is no branch starting in the North Pacific. So it's the North Atlantic that kicks, or kicks off the deep circulations in the ocean. Just a little link. Um, is there anything else that I want to mention here? No, that is good enough at th this point. All right.